Okay, it works. Okay, so yes, Spuriaset and Paul and Jordi were from Drivia, the technical coordinators of the pilots of the Decode uh, project in Barcelona. And this session, we're going to explain how you can add new services into the Decode app. So you can actually use um, the technology we develop in this project in your initiatives. So we divided the session in three parts. The first one is a really brief uh, introduction on the Decode project and the pilots in Barcelona. And um, then I will focus on one of the projects and um, the pilots, the DDDC. So I can explain in more detail the technical architecture of the technology. And finally, Jordi will do a more deep and dense walkthrough the code and the structure of the app so you can actually, um, in a practical way, understand how to add new services into the app. So let's start by the introduction. Um, something may be common for you because you've already seen some talks. But the idea of the Decode project is actually to um, build a feasible um, technological and social environment um, to implement a Andrea, to implement a data commons and data commons we understand a system in which people can share data but at the same time retaining complete control on what data we're sharing with whom we're sharing for what purpose you're sharing the data and also everything in a very transparent way so with the purpose in the project we develop um, technology mainly based on encryption and distributed architecture. So this is the brief, as brief as I could <laughs> to introduce the project. So in Barcelona, we implemented three um, different pilots. Okay. The first one is um, the DDDC, Digital Democracy Data Commons, in which we improve a digital participatory platform that is called ACIDIM, in which people could create petitions in order to create debate on political decisions in Barcelona, and, and we're asking citizens to actually sign those petitions. So using the code technology, we allowed um, to people to sign petitions, but at the same time sharing some demographic data, but um, is still um, remaining anonymous. And also we improve the privacy and transparency of the whole process. Then um, the second pilot is called the Citizen Science Data Governance, in which we support a community that wants to address um, environmental, environmental problems in Barcelona, mainly the light, sound, and pollution, using IoT devices. So we support them, allowing them to have more granular data permissions. That means that people now can choose the data that was generated by the IoT devices. They can decide what data exactly they share, um, for whom, or correct, and for what purpose. So these two pilots, we connect them by creating a third pilot, that is the Barcelona Now dashboard, in which all the data that is generated in, this, in the other two pilots could be consulted in uh, private and tailored visualizations. Also in this dashboard, we also include um, a lot of open data of, of the city of Barcelona. So these are the three pilots that we implemented in Barcelona. And now I'm going to focus on the first pilot, the DDDC. So I can actually explain in more detail the technical architecture of this pilot. So the CDIM is a participatory digital platform where people can create petitions. Okay, There is something, a um, decision in the city that you're, it really matters to you. So you, you can create a petition and ask citizens to have a debate and finally sign it. Okay. Um, nowadays, all this process is controlled by only one actor, that is the, the CDIM platform. So it's the same actor that creates petitions, verifies who can sign a petitions, and count the results of the petition. Okay. So imagine we have a, a citizen that it's called Julia, for example. So with the CDIM, she can actually participate in decisions that matters to her in Barcelona. She can be counted and also stay anonymous. <clears throat> And actually, now in the CDM, in order to be anonymous, you only need a nickname and the email, so you don't share much information. But imagine Julia also would like to contribute with her um, demographic data, like gender or age or district. So the results of the petition must be much more richer. Okay? But at the same time, Julia will, will still want um, to remain anonymous. And also, she would like to audit the results, so be sure that who counted the results did not cheat, and she will be sure that the results that are shown are exactly the, the true ones. So 
how we could build an architecture that could fulfill Julia's requirements. So in, in order to do that, the first important thing is that we don't have now one only actor, that is the same platform, but we have five different actors. <clears throat> the first one is the DDDC instance, which is the digital platform where you have to set up a petition. Okay? It's in the front end. Then we have the decode app, that is the main, I think, the more visible part of the, of the project. That it's like your personal data manager that will be in your phone. Okay, you have to download the app, and the app and the phone will manage all your personal data. Then <clears throat> you have another actor that is the credential issuer, which is another independent actor that will validate who can actually sign any of the petitions and will tell to the DDDC actually this guy can, for example, sign this, this petition. Then you have the public ledger, which is um, where all the signatures will be stored and will be dependent from the DC instance. So anyone can access to the public ledger and count the results of a petition, for example. And finally, you have the Barcelona Now dashboard where the results of the petition will be shown and anyone can, can have access to it and see a, a private and tailored results of the petition. All these five different and independent actors communicate each other in an encrypted way using um, the technology Zenroom developed by, by Dyn. Okay. <coughs> so let's put the five actors in the slide and let's try to um, see the steps that follows um, the signature of a petition. So the first step, of course, is someone that wants to create a petition has to go to the DDC instance, the digital platform, and has to set up this petition. So the first step is, first of all, you have to communicate with the credential issuer in order to tell them, okay, I will create a petition. So anyone that asks you, I want to sign this petition, you will have to validate if she, if she is able to sign it, and you will have to give her a credential. Then you also have to set up in Barcelona now the, the dashboard of the results. And finally, you have to set up the petition API that will be used to communicate with the public ledger where all the signatures will be stored. <clears throat> Once the petition is, is set up, um, yeah, a citizen and have to use the app, the decode app, and will have to read a QR code that actually will lead, will lead her to the credential issuer. At this point, you share the minimal data to credential issuer in order to obtain what it's called a credential that will, will tell you, will tell the creator of the petition, okay, you can sign this petition, okay? Once you have your credential in your phone, you can go to the public ledger using the, the petition API and you, you can sign the petition and you close the contract. Once, um, the, cre the, the creator of a petition decides that, okay, the petition is over, anyone else can sign it. The digital platform has to talk with the public ledger and just close the petition. <clears throat> Once the petition is closed, um, Barcelona Now dashboard will have independently, will console the public ledger and public the results of the petition. When the results are published, and a citizen using the app and the credential can look at the results and get a private um, um, private tailored dashboard of the results of the petition. So you see, now instead of having only one actor, we have five different and independent actors um, in which um, you preserve the anonymity of the citizens, but at the same time you can obtain very rich results using the demographic data that and the citizens have shared with the, only the credential issue. Um, so now Julia, before it, she could participate and be counted, but now she can contribute with her demographic data, but um, remaining completely anonymous. And also she can actually audit the results, mainly because anyone can actually can enter into the public ledger and make the counting of the petition. Okay, so now um, we're going to the more practical part. This was the brief introduction. If there is any question, just please ask. Um, This one? Yes, that's perfect. How, what? So the credential issuer is the one that allows me to then sign a petition. Yes. So how is the interaction there? What? 
what do I have to show the credential issuer to get uh, the credential that allows me to then sign in the ledger? You have showing your phone, you have your personal data that do not leave the phone, and then the credential issue ask you some questions like, for example, if to sign the petition you need to be above 18 years old, mm -hmm. you will have only to share this information to the credential issuer. You, okay. you will see okay. like a panel that you say, okay, I want to share this information, but also you can share more information because you, would, you want this information to be added into the result of the petition. But once you communicate with the credential issuer, you'll see different lines. It's saying, okay, age, district, or whatever, and you have to click which information you want to share. But the compulsory, the compulsory information you have to share is the minimal that allows you to sign the petition. Okay, so at that step, I have to show also any other information I want to attach to my signing. Exactly. Or, oh, okay, at that step, okay. At that step, you share the information with the credential and you obtain the credential with all your information encrypted attached. Encrypted attached, okay, thank you. Um, just, uh, yeah, uh, I have a bit more detail on the credential issue. It's based on the ABC, attribute-based credential. And uh, actually, that step, uh, for now, it's a software component, but probably could also be an offline uh, uh, yeah, um, procedure. Like, for instance, uh, people can go to the, I don't know, to the municipality for getting credentials or stuff like that. Thank you for the question. So yes, um, this is the Decode app. You can download it in, in Apple Store, or Google Play, wherever. I don't know how many people have the Decode in your phone. <laughs> One? OK. <laughs> so um, we build the, the, um, the app based in four principles. The first one is self-contained. So the idea is that the personal data do not um, get out of the app. Okay, It always remains in your phone unless you have to talk with the credential issuer. At the moment, you share the data that you want. So actually, so the data is not on the server of the Decode app. This is also very important. It remains in your phone. Then minimization. So the idea is that the, the app does the minimal possible things, only the data manager also manage the credentials and then talks with external apps, okay? Then it's contextless. The idea is that we want the app to be adaptable to any context. So we make an app that works for any context. So it's like when you pay with the internet, that the payment method can be applied to anything. So we apply the same idea. And finally, customization. Because of this contextless, we need that the initiative that wants to adapt this decode technology have to do what we call a last mile coding in order to adapt the app to your to your initiatives. So you have to add a new services. And actually is what um, Jordi will explain to you later, how you have to do this part. So the elements, oh sure, uh, sorry. What do you mean exactly by external apps? Or? External apps is like the app has to talk with, for example, the CDM or the credentially sure. So it's like, it's the minimal thing that apps does the minimal thing, just manage data, the credentials, and then is able to talk with different apps that you can set up. Service, Service apps, yes. Like now, exactly. Mm -hmm. So these are the different elements um, that in, are involved in the process of the app. So we have the services that could be um, the DDC platform, the Dacidin platform, or Barcelona Now. Then you have supporting services, which, for example, would be the petition API. Okay. <clears throat> then you have actors, data, and tools. So in you have the citizens that they have their own um, phone and with the app. So they have attributes, which they can be split in between two: the fundamental attributes like date of birth or your exact address, and then you have some transform attributes that can be derived from the other ones like your age, or bin of age, or district, for example. Then you have the atlas, which is a part of the app that actually defines the type of data you have in your phone. Actually, it's a JSON file that defines all the data that you have in the phone. For example, for you define the age as an integer. Okay, I think Jordi will go, will go much um, deeply on, on this. Then you have the issuer, which can be, for example, the city council, that actually will give credentials that would be stored in your phone, that for example a credential is when you are older than 18 years old. 
just as an example. And then you have the verifier, which in this case could be the petition API, who verifies that your credential is actually correct and you can sign the, the petition. So you have the contract um, that, it's, that says that you can sign. So from this, I think I leave to Jordi, so you can explain details how to add services. You can use this one, maybe? Here, because hi, yeah. Because I'm going to show you the app, actually. Uh, the app is this one, running in a simulator. Um, well, my, my role in the project before continuing has been developing the app very precisely, and on, on, only that. Okay. Um, it has been developed following those four principles that Paul talked about just a moment ago. And it was um, designed from scratch using proven technologies like the React library for building web applications. How many of you are familiar with the React JavaScript library? Okay. Um, but then as the application is a mobile application, then we use the React Native library, which makes the bridge between a native uh, application in, in, in each platform, iOS or Android, and uh, translate this into the JavaScript code, which is actually uh, executed by the, by the app. And then um, it has also been developed with the Redux library for maintaining the state. How many of you are familiar with the Redux library? Okay. So um, with Redux, the, the entire state of the app is kept in a single place, in memory. Okay. So that we used to say that the, the Redux store is, we call it the store as the, it is the, the, the area in memory with all the data about the current state of the app is kept, so the Redux store is the single source of truth of the app, okay? So using those three libraries and many of small libraries for um, different uh, parts of particular uh, functionalities of the app, we, we have developed the app, and I think I'm going to use this part of the presentation, but we are almost going to, to look always at, at, the, at the source code, okay? Um, yeah, first of all, um, what, I, what I'm going to present here is um, a small walkthrough on, on all the source code of the app using directly the GitHub repository where the app is kept. Okay, this is the latest state of the app in, in, the, in the repository. And I'm going to show you the, the most important parts of the app. It, is, uh, it, it has been developed uh, so that it is easily understandable and easily extendable too. Okay, so things are quite ordered in the, in the, in the place where, where, they, uh, where they are kept. So we, we have those main um, source folders. Um, in the API folder, we have one of the key parts of the decode app, which is the Atlas. The Atlas currently is just a JSON file that has to be edited manually every time a new application is added to the app ecosystem. So right now, we have a couple of applications here. We have DDDC and we have Barcelona now, okay? And in the application, we specify what URL scheme is it going to understand. That means when you use the app to scan a QR code from, let's say, a petition in DDDC, um, this QR code has uh, a URL encoded in it. 
And this URL follows a standard format. Okay? It means that it has a main action, which in, this, in the case of DDDC is support. It has a service ID, which in the case of DDDC is the, the ID of the petition you are going to sign. And it has other parameters, which are the helping hands for the app in order to communicate with the, with, the, with the other services that the app has to communicate, which, for, for instance, the credential issuer or the Decidim API. And the same holds true for BCN now. OK. Um, other uh, if, if you have, uh, if, if your new application to be added to the ecosystem has to communicate with other services, here is the place to put your clients. Here is the DDDC client to communicate with DDDC. I'm not going to show you the details, it's not important. Here is the login client, which is the client for communicating with Barcelona now. I'm not going to show you the details, but just to show that. Um, everything is more or less located in a in a in a, def, in a, in a, in a specific part, and um, the core of the app, which is the Zenroom library, for the app is just another client more. So we have a Zenroom client, but this Zenroom client is very 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 special because it is a native module. Um, the decode app has embedded the Zenroom libraries for all the platforms it runs. So it has the Zenroom libraries for iOS and the Zenroom libraries for Android. So when it, when it runs, when it, when it executes a Zenroom contract, it executes it with native code. OK. The assets are images and fonts, not very relevant. There is the internationalization. At this moment, three languages are supported. Those, um, those files contain the strings that are more or less common in, in all the app. But if you introduce a new application in the ecosystem, then the place to put the translations are in the Atlas too. Translations are, let me stop scrolling at some time, <laughs> but it, the, the, the translations are here under each of the, um, of the language identifiers, okay? So there are two places, and the, and the internationalization library that we that we use in in the app uh, knows how to take the, the the strings from each place. Okay. Now for the Redux part. Um, if you are going to add a new app to the to the to the ecosystem, then you are going to add a new reducer here under, under Redux modules, okay? I'm not going to show you the details, but I, I will show you how to, uh, how to add a new example application. We are going to add a new example application. Let, 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 me, let me review all that. Uh, if, if I, ha if I uh, forgot something, I think everything is said more or less. Oh, no. The theming thing, yeah. Um, yeah. Regarding the user interface, okay, one of the requirements for the app was, was that it was easily ex extendable and um, you can use, if you want just to change um, some colors or fonts or simple things, you have to define a new theme where 
other colors can be defined. So if you fork the app to create your own app for your own ecosystem, then extending the theme is the way, the most simple way to create another app with a slightly different look and feel. Right. Of course, you want to change the whole design of the app, you have to do much more work. But if you have just to change a small bits of the user interface, then uh, theming is the, is, the, is the way to go. What else? Services, the business logic, the screens. Um, I'm going to show you. No, I will show you with the, with, the, with, the, with the example application. So I'm going to stop here. And uh, now, um, what, what is the way to extend the app? Well, you just fork it and um, integrate it with the new services that, that, you, that you want. So in my case, I created a new branch in the repository because I have the rights to, um, to do that. And by just comparing the two, um, we see that for this example, I just added a new block in the Atlas file with the exam under the example key. And I decided to give it this URL scheme. So if we want to see it in, see it in action, I think I have everything running, but I'm not absolutely sure. Uh, yes, it is. Um, Jordi, do you think it's a good idea before going uh, into the details, uh, if you want to show how the app works before, I mean, as so we know how, how it works, <coughs> then we create a new, a new app example. Yeah. Activate through the QR code. Exactly. So, mm -hmm. so we go through the whole um, process. So, yeah. so we see the capability, and then after we, I think it's more understandable. Okay. So when you, yeah, when you start the app. Here, um, this application doesn't is is is, in, is showing uh, is a development version of the app for that fork that we are talking about. Okay, so um, if you if you just download the app from the store, you will see only the two first boxes. Uh, the third one is the example application I'm, I'm integrating, but you have also the attributes, the birth date can change and save your gender and the district. These are, these are the, the, the base attributes that are accepted right now by the app. If you want to add another base attribute, then you just go to the atlas and define it there. Just by defining it there, uh, it, will, it will show up here, right? Okay. So, um, in this case, uh, we already have a, a credential that we obtained by signing a petition in, in, the, in the Decidim site, okay? I think you, you will see that in, in other sessions here. What, 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 I will, what I wanted to show you now is how uh, you are going to interact with a, with a new service, okay? So for that, um, we developed a new application, which is very simple, it has just Two, uh, two main parts, a front-end part that generates a QR code and shows it to the, to the user. For informational purposes, I'm, I'm showing you, sorry, I'm showing you down, uh, here is the, the exact URL. So in this case is the decode app colon slash slash, which is, which is what identifies that this URL is going to be opened by the, by the, by the decode app. Example is just like the ID that we put in the Atlas. The service ID, in the case of this app, is the, let's say, the session we are going to open 
with the with the with the backend, which is the other um, the other component of this of this example application, and then the the callback. That means that when the app scans this QR code, um, at some point is going to communicate with the with the backend to say verify my credential. Okay, so. If we open, uh, okay, this is running in a simulator, so I can just scan the QR code. That's why we have this button below that does exactly the same. Okay, so when I click on this button, I'm going to see exactly the same as if I scan the QR code with the camera of the phone. Okay, so. Um, the operating system of the phone is telling us it has detected that the URL starts with decode sl uh, colon slash slash and uh, as it has the decode app application registered to open those URLs it asks, it asks us if you want to do that so we do that and then we are inside the app but not in the not in the main screen of the app but already in the in the example application so the example application we can we can um, share what we want yeah um, I wanted to show like a more let's say real life example I, I, I am I wasn't I, I am I imagine like a participatory process for a, let's say um, a public music streaming services, for instance, okay? Let's say that there has been a, a participatory process in the city council where people go there, obtain their credentials and try and, and participate and debate on how this, this service must be. And uh, in the end, it signs the petition. So if it does that, it has the credential to participate. This is, this is what we already have in the phone. We have, we have that credential because the user already participated in that, let's say, public music streaming service, okay? Okay, now the, let's imagine that this app, this example app I built is the streaming music service, that the only thing that wants to know about the user is in which decade he was born, so that according music can be streamed to the user okay doesn't need to know the exact day of birth it doesn't need to know uh, where does he lives or any other of the attributes that he has stored in the app but just a decade for that uh, for that purpose as the decade is uh, uh, derived from the birth date you have some code that transforms your birthday into the decade. You can go and change it here. And the decade changes. And once you can try, uh, you, you can opt in to sharing, this, um, to sharing this data or not. If you share it, well, you, can, you will log in. And once you are logged in, if we, if we go back to the application, you are inside the streaming music service and you <coughs> you shared that you are born in the 70s so you can get more i don't know nirvana thing or <laughs> whatever okay um so so yeah, it's clear that um <clears throat> i mean is that clear or any doubts uh, so the app allows you to have uh, services they are activated by QR codes uh, and uh, you actually mm, decide uh, uh, how and much granularity you want to share your data um, so it's not just a specific one uh, you can have uh, like uh, periods or aggregated data and you decide uh, if you want to share it with the service or not mm -hmm. right okay You chose how to like choose the to change the date of birth, so that's not verifiable, I suppose, since I can just change. It. I'm not creating a proof that 
okay the authentication is something else it's just for yeah. okay yeah um there are two there are two different steps here um first step is obtaining the credential to obtain the credential what what i imagine that uh, i mean for this example it was already done okay but let's imagine that in in that participatory process that i was talking about before um you, as, as Puria said, you go to your city council and you are given a code where you, you, you present your, your identity card okay. to, to prove who you are. You are given a code and when you are uh, obtaining the credential, you are asked to, to provide that code. Okay? I'm going to show you that in, in the other example, which, which, is the, which, is the, which is the Decidim. Um, I, have, I have it just uh, here, I guess. Um, I think it's this one. Yes, I think that this, this petition has been set up just for for this for this event and I can participate. Then there is a petition, Data Commons Manifesto, second signature round, whatever. This is another um, QR code and another button to, to do it if you if you are accessing the the application from your mobile phone. Okay? <laughs> so which is the case which I'm using an emulator. So if I sign in to the code app, I again Open the app. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Now, what 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 happened here? Um, again, that um, that QR code was having the format for DDDC, and the format for DDDC. If you remember, one of the one of the parameters that was accepting was the location of the the CDM API. Okay. So the app calls it the CDM API and it obtains details about the petition. You can read about the petition here. And once you are convinced, you can go ahead. And enter a valid code. And enter a valid code here don't know what valid codes we have for uh, this particular, right? Can I define what is a valid code? Yeah. Um, it, it, is, it is the, the example like Puria was talking about before. Um, depending on the specific application, it may be required that you show some of your identity to an authority, and this authority gives you a token in order to participate and obtain a credential. So when, when, you, when you talk to the credential issuer to get the credential, if you don't enter a valid code, you are not going to be given that credential. Is, does, does that answer the, the question? Yeah. Uh, I, I can read that there is a kind of certification involved. Again. Right. So, Mm -hmm. right. uh, that's what you are trying to show, uh, that we have some kind of way to have verifiable attributes. Right. Uh, so still does not, does not understand the, <laughs> the code. Okay, so um, the code... Is, is it a pin code to, to give, unblock the certificate? Or? No, no, it's, it, it's really not, I mean, the the... Let's say that the um, credential part is handled uh, out of this code, okay? So this code is just something that allows you to obtain credentials, okay? It's, uh, it's like, for instance, uh, uh, we said before that probably uh, in the future the service will be held offline. Okay, so you have to go to some uh, real place, uh, and there is someone that verifies that you are you. Okay, yeah. great. So now, since we are emulating this part in a 
um, with the with a piece of software. Okay, there are some uh, codes uh, that uh, the service for DDC invented uh, a list of uh, fake uh, codes. I don't know. I mean, mm -hmm. a list of uh, some strings uh, that uh, you you put just for obtain the credential. I, I uh, yeah, maybe hard. So it, it just for example, yeah, sure. The cre the, um, there is a credential issuer API, okay. That is a, a REST API that answers you. You you send your attributes, okay, to it, uh, and with those attributes, uh, a crypto credential is created, okay. Uh, some a smart contract are running, and uh, and uh, and the uh, key ring uh, is back to you. That is held on the uh, on the app, okay, to just to access this service, uh, you put some uh, code here that uh, tells that you are allowed uh, to run this service. Okay. Enough? I, I mean, if there are some. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when, when, when you create a new petition <laughs> in DDDC, when you, when you create a new petition, you, you, um, the, the petition has a purpose, you write the text, and one of the things you have to do is uh, what are you going to require to the users in order to get the credential. So in this case, what has been decided is that um, we have a list of valid strings, and only the people who has one who knows one of these valid strings is allowed to participate in the participatory process. So it's not a, a login with a user, and you, you don't need to register. You just have to be allowed to use the application. And, and, and with that, you, you, only, you, you, you don't have to reveal anything else from yourself unless you want to reveal something else, which is that shared data you have this. You have here, but you, you can opt out of everything. So, but, the, this part is not a key part of the of the process. Eh? It's just uh, a detail. But uh, yes, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So so when when you when you say that you are uh, allowed to participate in this process and you input a valid key, you ask for getting the certificate and probably yeah. So, yeah, w one of the things that that you define when you create a petition is if codes are reusable or not. Okay, so this last one uh, was right. not reusable, so this code has been already issued. So, but anyway, it's it's not it's not important for the. For, okay, you you can imagine uh, if I enter a valid code, it it was was going to, it's going to be okay. You, you, you'll have that certificate that proves that you have the right to participate in this um, petition signing. So that the, the next step is just an, uh, uh, another button for signing the petition. Right? Ah, sí? Not valid. No, no debe ser una, una L mayúscula. Pero igual era una I mayúscula. Ah, right. That's good. Okay. Now we have now we have two credentials which by chance are named exactly the same, credential to participate. Okay, that, that doesn't sound very well, but that, those are examples. So anyway, <clears throat> once you have the, the credential in your phone, okay, this is, this is stored in the phone. And if you just close the phone or whatever, you, can, you, you, have, always, you, you have always, uh, you have always it there. So you can come here later and sign the petition with that credential and you sign the petition successfully, okay? So, um, now that, 
the, the next the next step in the in the in this pilot ecosystem is the is going to the Barcelona Now dashboard in order to what, what does Barcelona Now is to show a personalized dashboard of how many people have signed this particular petition um, and offering statistics on the data they have chosen to share. Okay. Um, for that, I'm not sure what is the correct URL today, but I think um, it should be this one. Let's assume it's this one. So when you go to the Barcelona Now website, again, this is very similar to what we saw <coughs> with the example app. So it's like a login, but with no user and password, with no register. You log in by saying that uh, what, what people are allowed to log in to this, to this, um, to this website the ones that had the right to participate in the petition before. Those, those, those are the ones who, who are allowed to, to log in here. So to log in here, what, what we are doing is to verify that the credential we obtained is valid. Um, for that, um, we just need, uh, we, uh, another key point here and that perhaps Puria will, will explain better, but I'm going to try to explain it in my, in my own words. And if, if you, if you okay. Um, um, what, what, I, what I have stored in the phone is the, is what, as I said, the, the credential. But the Barcelona Now website is not going to receive the credential. It's not going to receive, it's not going to see uh, anything but a cryptographic object that it has the, the right APIs to, um, to decide if it's valid or not. Just that. That's the zero knowledge proof. You can verify that something is right without knowing what it is. Okay? So, um, and this is going to, to happen right now. When I go into the into the Barcelona now application in the decode app, and then I am uh, I am shown that I have a couple of credentials from two different petitions, and I can optionally share more data with Barcelona now so that I have a more personalized dashboard. So I can log in and yep. When I go back to the browser, that QR code transforms into the main um, Barcelona Now screen right now. So, yeah, there are some screens. Okay. okay. <laughs> okay. I, I guess it's uh, it's more likely to be uh, shown in a in a in a desktop computer, yes. and 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 doing the, the the login by scanning the QR code with an actual phone, right? That that this example, but the effect is the same. Okay. Um, yeah. I think I think this is this is quite it. <laughs> Uh, I can I can go through a little bit more detail in in some no, parts of the example, but I think it's better to to answer yeah, questions. Exactly. Yeah. If there are questions, is it compatible with the, the credentials you're using? Are you're using attribute based credential? You're using attribute based credential uh, crypto system. Uh, the format of the credentials are they compatible with verifiable credentials? The standard proposed by the W3C group. Is that the standard that you're using? Let's see, we are on Coconut. That is a white paper from the UCL. UCL, yes. Uh, yeah, exactly. So Coconut is used mostly. And the okay. format is um, 
uh, is what is understood by Zango. That uh, actually okay. has different kind of, uh, I mean... So it's send code? Same, Zen code. Okay. Yeah. So Zen code, but not the same code. No, 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 no. <laughs> not the same code. Not from, from like the way if I will change in W3C. So it's not the same no, code. No, not the same. Okay, so, okay. But the format is then a send code attribute based credential that yeah. uses coconut for the protocol of verification. And exactly. Okay, perfect. Thanks. So you exchange proofs of. Uh, Thank you. Uh, I I see that. Um, yeah, wait a moment. <laughs> I see that most part of of times the use that this application would have would be like guessing some sorts of a, a piece of information some from some API, gets linked to the actual application, and then forwarding this piece of information to some other some other service. That's right. That's it. Mm -hmm. uh, so that your phone is acting as a kind of a database for this information. This kind of resembles the OAuth scheme in which you've got a provider and you're only telling this pro provider of information that you're allowing them to to communicate this information to the third party service. Mm -hmm. uh, then I know this may not be the, the right forum to ask this because it's more of a strategical question than a tactical question on, on implementation, but why then not use OAuth? I don't think OAuth uh, proposed uh, an, ad an identity provider that is local for okay. the so yeah. since here, the, this is the uh, mobile application that provides the identity. I don't think it's even possible in purpose. Because you, have, uh, an, uh, you need to have uh, an online identity provider and give uh, permission to uh, a service to, to, uh, to access the identity. Mm. Uh, I think <laughs> <laughs> he's okay no, with no, my no, answer. It's fine. I was very interested. But, but, in but, but <laughs> are you okay with my answer? See, see, I'm, I'm not okay. sure. I'm okay. So, Third party services, I mean, you cannot find it. And actually, with all how to, um, um, I mean, the point is to have uh, um, to exchange proofs and not credentials. Okay. Uh, so yeah. I'm not so familiar with zero proof. So. The stuff. Okay. I mean, you, you don't send something that it's uh, retraceable to your bank. Okay. <coughs> okay. <coughs> On an online services because uh, you, uh, at the end you are back in the browser and you are dedicated, right? Uh, this is not a all around uh, uh, security. Uh, for example, if I just uh, uh, as an attacker uh, take the QR code and replay it to the application, mm -hmm. uh, this is a security issue or am I making a mistake? Uh, because the, the, app, the mobile app uh, will use the Replayed QR code mm -hmm. and logged uh, the attacker in place of himself. But you must have the phone. Could be, but <coughs> then you after you're not verified. Right. I mean, the verifier is not going to work. Right. Mm -hmm. Because the if, if you if you replay that URL in in a different device, you're not going to have the credential in that device. So the verifying part is going to. Have Access to the web part. Yes, the, the, the web portal that you are uh, logged in right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this this is a this this web portal is is a public portal. Yes, but you, uh, so you, you in your demo there is no uh, important information uh, in the portal. That's what you are saying. Yes. The, I, I, I signed out of the portal, yeah. so this is the, the screen you, you get when anyone enters the portal. 
So it, it has some buttons, depending. So you can log in as a guest. So you can. Right. Uh, I think that the idea is that if you if you log in with the DDC app, you get a more personalized dashboard than uh, than a guest because it is going. I, I, I don't I don't I don't really know the, the details of the of Barcelona now, but uh, but. Uh, I, I think that the, it offers you some other graphics that are that are uh, more according to the data that you shared. That that, that is the idea, and 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 in the example app that uh, that I talk about, that I invented of, of the public music streaming service, you, you are going to be offered more music that is more going to like you because it it was on the day that you were. Born or you were when we first that, that that's that's the idea. It's a it's a public service, but you can customize it to your needs. But it's completely up to the owners of of the exam of the, of the application. I mean, um, the owners of the application can decide that only people who have a valid credential can log in to the and, and if does not have the a valid credential, it's not going to to enter whatsoever at any any part of it. Yeah. But first, let, let me make sure that that, that it handles to my answer. <laughs> yes, uh, I'm not still even convinced by the security of using the mobile application to uh, be authorized to see something on the website. But mm -hmm. it would be we, too long to discuss that. If we want, you you can you can but meet outside. Can. Mm -hmm. Okay, now. Uh, and, and actually, that part is covered in another tech session. I think in the afternoon. So you say that you have uh, you scan the QR code and then you, uh, these data are sent to someone and this one this thing gives to you the the um, allows you to enter mm -hmm. the application. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Okay. So actually, this is not anonymization because you have always a central authority that can trace back your data to you. How could how could be that done? How uh, did this this trace back? If you have a central authority that tells that you can enter an application and that you cannot enter an application, you actually do not have an a, 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 an actual anonymization because there is always. The, no, the services they have uh, a verifier. Okay, each okay. service has, uh, they cannot access your data. But they can see if you have a proof uh, that you are allowed to. Okay, that is not uh, the same thing of having a credential, but it's a proof that you have a credential. Okay. Yeah, but actually, you. Uh, okay, this is um, zero novel knowledge uh, uh, proof. Same. Okay, but in this case, it's not actually zero knowledge proof because you have someone that. Uh, in in the origin has allowed you to enter the application and to sure. to, to to get, get the, credential. The, the credential. That is always right. I mean, that is a, uh, it, it is uh, the 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 first point. I mean, to get allowed uh, to do something, someone has to prove that you are you. Okay. Yeah. In our case. Okay, but in this case, it's a central authorities. Authority. There are other cases in which there is not a central authority, in which uh, you can prove that I am high, and you can prove that I am high, and no, no me nor he are central authorities. See, it is be. actually decentralized and actually anonymous. Could, could, uh, could actually be, but it's not the, this is not the case. And okay, anyway. But, but the second thing, if something happens, uh, if... I, I, if someone enter my application and sign that petition with my name, how can I verify that everything was? How can I verify what happened? Oh, see, you have the um, uh, as shown by, um, uh, Paul. by Paul before. Um, you all the um, all the petition data goes uh, through a ledger that is publicly okay. publicly verifiable. So people can uh, actually, I mean, 
people with some understanding and using the tools and stuff like that, they can verify uh, how many counts. Uh, but nobody can see who, who signed. So actually, in the ledger, you have uh, hashes. You have uh, a petition object uh, that contains uh, signatures inside that you okay. can just count. So you have just transaction and you can count transactions exactly. and in case something happen, yeah. uh, you do not have any way to say that I was not the one that signed the no. petition. No, no, you obtain, the, you obtain the credential by someone verify that you are allowed to. So, I mean, the, uh, the service of, uh, of, the, um, of this petition, okay, is just for, I mean, was made just for I think Barcelona citizens, mm. right? So you have to be a citizen. If you're not, uh, you cannot. Uh, and to have that uh, now is uh, mocked, uh, let's say, by a piece of software. But it's going to be an offline process that you go, go to the municipality with your ID card and say, I'm a, I'm a resident, okay? So then after, you're allowed to. And a credential is given back. Yeah, yeah, but in the good case, this is good. But in the bad case, someone in this authority uh, gives to someone else the, the allowance to uh, sign that petition with my name. I can not trace back this thing. No one can trace back this thing. See, I mean, all, all the, all the um, uh, risky part uh, is on the uh, first verifier, sure. And it's a... It's a you can cryptographically oh. prove that you participate in the, into the petition. You, you can, want. yes. Uh, okay, so you can do it back. You, you can, you can, uh, you can prove that uh, you can create another another uh, fake petition, exactly the same of that petition, and that, and then I can sign that petition, and so I have the. The same hash, and so I have, no, I can. No, 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 you no there is no shared hash. No, you can. With the zero, this is a part of the zero proof knowledge uh, magic uh, stuff. <laughs> okay. Think. Your identifier is not uh, some kind of hash that you can see replicated in different uh, actions. Uh, Say you no, can, we can you can't uh, uh, trace back uh, people. For, Interacting with different, uh, so uh, how can you prove that uh, uh, each for each one for each action you can verify that you uh, if I understand yeah, sure. right. correctly sure. you can uh, see proof you that you uh, participate to something, but uh, not uh, anyone can do it. So each per each person can verify. It. Mm -hmm. so, yes. Yeah, but if if someone give to she. Allowance to sign that petition with my name. How can I prove that I was the one no, that you had get, the right? You get the credential to, yeah. to to be allowed to participate. But if I understand, you you have you still have to use your private key uh, to sign the petition. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, I, I I see your your concern about yeah. the centralization of of, of uh, the delegation to be to allow people to vote. But you allow people to vote, but you can't vote uh, uh, instead of, of uh, anyone, of uh, anyone sure. you give the, the right to participate. You just give a credential uh, to someone through a, a KYC uh, procedure. That's, uh, mm -hmm. I, I'm happy yeah, to, 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 see, 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 to see that I'm not uh, saying What I'm saying is that <laughs> if, if, I go, if I go in an office in which they give today, in which they give to me uh, my ID card, there are a lot of things that can be uh, can be written, that can be read, and that can can be read again to to understand why they gave to me that ID card. Okay, if she goes to that office and someone gives to her to she my ID card, I can trace back of the process and I can uh, I, I can demonstrate that I was the one that had the right to hold that ID card. How do you do okay. that? Because you, uh, because everything is written and everything can be can be uh, unfolded. I bet. Instead, if you are, if you have only an hash, you cannot trace back what happened. But, but the before, is, I mean, 
please. Sure. The scenario is not getting your ID card. The scenario is going voting with your ID card. So in an offline... No, no, when I get my ID card. Yeah, but listen, my scenario is in an offline uh, voting procedure. Also, somebody could use uh, your ID, if it's a fake or your real card, and get into the cabin and put your vote inside. In that case, it's not possible to take back. Instead, like the only way would be to reorganize the whole election process, but it's not possible to, because it's an anonymous once uh, the vote has been put into the box. In the oh, but actually here it, we are not speaking about voting, huh? Never. I mean, this is petition signing. Mm -hmm. should, First of all, yeah, yes, yeah. I know, I know, I know. But <laughs> this is a, just a starting point. I'm against voting with the uh, crypto stuff. I prefer the offline. <laughs> I really prefer it. No, but no, anyway. But my, my doubt was not about uh, uh, no, 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 I know, I the, get the, the one uh, thing it's really interesting. It's uh, the, the fact that is is uh, tricky, in my opinion, is to transform everything into an ash. Because you cannot, you cannot, an ash is an ash. It's something completely unintelligible. It's something completely, un, un, uh, uh, it's, it's a thing. Um, and this, is, this can be a problem. No, no, there are no, papers and there are... And there are uh, I, I think you, you are too focused on hash. It's not just about hash. Yeah. No, but that, that is what uh, they uh, store on uh, on the ledger when a transaction is... Say, so our ECP2... It's, yes, it's but the, the hash is the, the central thing that, that uh, uh, draws all the history of what happened in that application. Yes, but it's like verifiable things. Um, you, can, you can decide... Uh, who can verify the hash with definition information? You, you can't, since you can't get back to, uh, from the hash to the initial information, only the one um, that you are deciding to provide the initial information will be able to verify that uh, the hash is, is, uh, is about your information. So if it's uh, an offline process, mm -hmm. uh, like verified claims, you, you can choose uh, and uh, who will be able to verify the claim. Mm -hmm. And uh, in a, it's, it's kind of the same thing with the whole voting registries. You can verify yourself, not <laughs> not anyone, but you you you'll be able to see that you uh, you, pa you already participated in that. Uh, same. You can re-verify your uh, your proof. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> okay. So other questions other about questions? the app or not the app? Yeah. Um, yeah, I was wondering about this uh, music uh, streaming app uh, because if I uh, <laughs> if I uh, uh, if I use my Spotify app, then I uh, like to create a playlist or I like to uh, follow other artists. Um, and I was wondering if this could also be turned into a credential or um, well that if I log into this uh, music streaming app uh, then I also have this playlist that I log in with that I can listen to this playlist through this uh, music streaming app so that I create this profile that I have in my uh, Spotify app um, in a well privacy uh, environment like this decode app so that is one question and a second question um, is this also the ambition of this Decode app that you have uh, like music streaming apps uh, plugged into this or social media apps plugged into this? Um, like what is the ambition or is this uh, predominantly for particip participatory de democracy? Difficult word. <laughs> um, I think we can ask... I think that... Um, um, <laughs> The, the idea is we, we build the, the app contextless. So the idea is that we use it as, as we use like pay method in the internet. It doesn't matter what you're buying. So you can use the app for anything that for logging or for for signing a petition. Then you can apply it for music, for example, because you need a login. Then the login goes through the app and you can use it in the service you want to build. Actually, the session was to how to <laughs> add services to the app, but 
you see you have the code and you can edit. And then the music maybe. Yeah, you, if you also want to create a profile into the app, then probably something else is needed. Just besides the besides the credential. So that's part of the of the design of that of that of that streaming service, that uh, to to say that what what is allowed to do with the credential or not. So that's just an example that came up to me uh, yesterday after dinner. <laughs> See, about the mission, I can say that uh, the purpose of the app was uh, actually, yes, to have, uh, you know, different identity. I mean, uh, the granularity of the data that you want to share and uh, not heavy specific data. Um, I think that in the first place, uh, Jim maybe can correct me because we joined the, the team uh, lately, like in the last year, I think. Um, the, the initial purpose of, the, of this app was to having different, uh, um, let's say, digital identities um, that you want to uh, use for certain services and uh, like uh, uh, at some point uh, uh, you don't want to be maybe uh, share your data uh, for a long period but maybe you want to share it for just five minutes or uh, you don't want to say that you're actually located here in this point but maybe you want to share that you are in this territory or region so the, um, I, I, I remember that I saw some sketches and that uh, um, the purpose was to having, you know, different uh, uh, visual identities with this, uh, let's call it a wallet uh, that gives you different credentials and, uh, and each credential uh, was related to different data set of you. Okay, with some different granularity. But uh, at the end, uh, this becomes this uh, credential uh, holder for uh, different kind of apps uh, and services that you can interact with. Thank you. Uh, do you think of monetizing this data at some point in the future, maybe? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, not, but letting, no, I didn't say it right. Letting the citizen, if he want to monetize a little bit of this data. Uh, yes. Like, uh, with a yeah, so uh, as Francesca said in the introduction, no. So data it could be a common good, right? So you, when you when you tick the green, you decide uh, if you want to put this common data to the back to the community or to the service. So the point is that you are the owner of the data, and you decide if you want to share it. And uh, yes, it's not. I get is not monetizing in in the business sense, but yes, for instance, the Barcelona Now dashboard, no, it's uh, popped up with the data that people share. Or, for instance, on the petition, you can decide to say, uh, to share your age and your district. Okay, so then after, uh, if if you want to share it, uh, like for instance, Barcelona can uh, can see from which, which kind of people, I mean, from what age mostly they uh, signed the petition or from what district they are mainly participating to the, uh, to the petition. I have one question that, um, I, I think I see the advantages of this, especially being able to just provide a kind of blurry uh, attribute about my age, like not having to point to my specific uh, birthday. But there's something that concerns me also about the attributes based credentials, which is how could they be turned to be an exclusive mechanism? 
So if you cannot provide a certain credential, you could be um, excluded from services. Do you share these concerns? Mm. And could this technology be changed in a way that makes this more improbable? Okay. That, that is a question also for Puria, which I, I want to thank Puria for being here because he can answer the questions that I had as a, just the developer of the app. There are more deeper, deeper questions on, on the whole decode thing that I cannot answer, so I give <laughs> thank you Puria, for that. Um, so, no, uh, uh, not a concern, uh, because, for instance, let's say the let's take the example of the petition service. Okay, so you have the right uh, to uh, being part of the petition because you're a resident uh, of Barcelona, of some district of Barcelona. So that is enough as an one single attribute to allow you to have credential. Okay, so and um, it really depends by the service you you want to run. But you always find a unique way to give. Uh, I mean, uh, allow people uh, to to have access to the service. It depends by what is that like. But but I think it depends on the service. If the service who creates the service wants to exclude people, I mean they can use another way. I mean it's not a problem of the, the app or technology, but who creates the service. But if that was my it doesn't problem you to, uh, to issue uh, 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 a petition without uh, the uh, credentials that you are offering that would be used to uh, to censor uh, people. So each each uh, each one is. Uh, always free to, to make a, a new petition. Of course, it will be the choice of the petition uh, issuer, for example, to, to censor uh, someone, but mm -hmm. uh, it's the choice of the pe petition issuer. Mm -hmm. See, and excluding is also, I mean, there are, like for instance, in Amsterdam, they have, yeah, it's very useful. Like for instance, in Amsterdam, the use case was 18 plus for getting alcohol, okay? So you, uh, the use case was that you were allowed to buy alcohol, okay? Without sharing your name, age, uh, or whatever, but just says that you're okay with that and you can buy it. So the excluding the, the minors was, uh, I mean, probably a good thing. Yeah, but the problem, <laughs> just for the, the problem is if, that thing excludes me, it is not the face of Matteo Salvini that is excluding me. It is an ash that is excluding me. No. Uh, and, and, no. and that is, that is uh, quite scary. No, it's the, probably is who is making the policy that is excluding you, not the tool that Yeah, but uh, in that case, uh, the minister of the, the thing that yeah, was exactly. uh, is excluding me, but the face <laughs> was the face of Matteo Salvini. Uh, in this case, you have that hash that is excluding you and no face on the back of that hash. You mm -hmm. cannot go back to, to get a face that uh, is the, the, the face associated to that hash that is excluding you. No, I don't see it like that because uh, there is no deciding uh, thing uh, into the technology itself. I mean, is uh, who, who decide the policy? I mean, for instance, who decided that was just that some district of Barcelona voting uh, is not the tool that you're using here, okay? And is not the crypto hash that you're, uh, uh, that, that you're seeing uh, like the evil one, but is someone behind that decided that Still have five minutes. <laughs> um, no, maybe it could be interpreted as it also. <laughs> um, do you see some link with uh, local currency? For example, I know that in Barcelona you had the REC. Did you, I don't know, think about connecting the code with a currency wallet? Is it relevant or not? I think you could use it as. Oh. 
Hi, I'm from Barcelona City Council. So we have had conversations with the team dealing with the REC. Okay, so it's something that, let's say, it's in the air, but needs a lot of still debate and work on. But it's, it's some of the possible future that it's been thinking about in terms of decode going on. Actually, Zenroom uh, with some sort of seeds uh, can uh, be deterministic. So that is what it's used for the for the ledger, actually. Um, so yeah, probably it would be possible to uh, to to have interoperability. Uh, since there are many information that are locally stored on the mobile application. Uh, what's your view about uh, backup? This, this is a, a, a kind of tricky issue because uh, since you are uh, depending on the local private key, uh, mm -hmm. locally stored credentials that could be offline and not be traceable on blockchain, what uh, what is your actual recommendation? I, I don't think it's uh, an easy uh, central uh, question. So. What, what's your uh, view about the backup uh, issue? Mm. Um, don't know, I have to think about it. Well, the idea is that the data do not leave your phone, so anyone stores your data. So if you lose your phone, you have to put all your information again and get your credentials again. Yes. I think it's a caveat, but I think it's... I think there was a debate on that one. Hello. Hi, I'm Jim. Uh, I was working on this at the beginning uh, from the tech. Um, yeah, I think we uh, haven't particularly specifically come up with an idea for that, but we have talked in the past, I think, about the idea of kind of like socially recoverable keys. So you kind of do it in a decentralized way. So, we, you know, maybe we could like you could build a service on top of this using these kind of basic things where we take our data, encrypt it, store it somewhere, and give out the keys as like multi-sig keys to some people that we trust who could then recover it. I think that would probably be the kind of okay. thing, but we haven't explored that yet, but the it's- The decode OS guy, Alex, I don't, I don't remember the name, it's told me that yeah, I'm thinking know. about uh, kind of a web of trust uh, yes, this uh, and a way to have part of uh, encrypted uh, it, data. Exactly. It could be un unlocked by your friend it, exactly, and perhaps it needs like more than one of them. You can have different schemes coming from it. It would probably be, and that would be the kind of direction. I and mean, you could certainly use the primitives that we've built here, like the Zen Room, and that, the Zen Room has all the cryptographic capabilities to be able to implement that kind of scheme because uh, it just has access to all of the underlying crypto primitives. So you could build something that would be a nice uh, decode app, actually, to build. On this subject, there are a couple of existing projects doing work on this. Right. Consenso is part of the EU ledger project to working on this. Um, and also there's a project called Dark Crystal which implemented this on which, which one? Uh Dark Crystal uh, and Consento. Dark, Dark, yeah. Dark Crystal. Dark Crystal, named yeah. after the film. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, which was built on the secure scuttlebutt protocol, which is uh, using Shamir secrets to split up a uh, private key and send copies to your friends and then a protocol to recover that. Um, and there's yeah, <laughs> uh, I worked on that, so if you want to talk afterwards, yeah. <laughs> so, that would be an interesting 